back to Casually Crafted. My name is Ashley and this is the Deck the Halls collab video number two. Um, first of all, I wanted to apologize for the um, lateness of this video. It is technically still Monday when I'm recording this, um, but it's been a long couple of days. We just got back from a week-long trip yesterday and everything that you have to do to get done with vacation is a little bit crazy and then today um, we had all three girls had swim lessons and two of them started soccer practice and we had to do all of our shopping because we had no food at the house and it's been a long day but um, so I didn't ever have a chance to come record this video and I was still finishing some of these um, ornaments that I'm about to show you yesterday and this morning um, because I was working on them on our drives there and back and um, some of the things I didn't have everything I needed to finish them um, yeah so and also my voice just started going away while I was reading to my daughter before bed um, so hopefully we can get through this <laughs> Um, so, like I said last week, this, um, I'm going to show you candy cane and gingerbread themed ornaments. So I made seven candy canes and five gingerbread stuff. Um, <clears throat> so the candy canes, I'll show you all those, well, like they're peppermint. Not all of them are actually candy cane, but um, for all of those, I used just white and a red of Big Twist. I don't know the official exact names, but um, so I used the same two colors the whole time. That's just what I took on took on our trip. It was easier than like some of the patterns will show like a white and green candy cane or red, white, and green. Um, it was just easier for me to just do the traditional red and white and not carry a ton of yarn with us. Um, so I have my notes here. These first two are the same pattern there, um, and I have all the links down below once again. Um, excuse me. The, um, this first one is called Candy Cane Appliques, or however you say that word. Um, and then this one, she has a way to make the candy cane one go, like the top go one way and one the top go the other way. So I made both. Um, basically, you just make a candy cane shape and then you add your own, um, stripes later so I did that one first and the stripes are all wonky and weird um and then I did that one which looks a little bit better but um so they were trying to curl up on me a little bit they got better once I added the stripes um but I would probably stiffen those or block those at least um and I think I like the this one better like the way it goes I don't know why this just seems backwards to me but I mean, um, she also shows in her um, blog post or website, whatever it is, that you can use this as like a J for the word joy on a Christmas card or something like that. So I thought that was cute. Um, I used an H hook for this, which I think is what she suggests in the pattern. And then the next one is a YouTube tutorial. It is called Crochet Christmas Candy Cane for Beginners. So it's made really similar to that one. Um, the only difference is you're changing colors. So you do, ooh, focus. You do two red and then one white, two red and one white. And I guess you could technically do it the opposite. You could do two white and then one red, just depending on what you start with. And it's just all double crochets and with some increases to make it curve. And that's it. So that one was super simple. Um, this next one is called Candy Cane Amigurumi Ornament. Oh, I used an F hook for this one. I don't remember what it called for, but that's what I used. Um, so this one, the Candy Cane Amigurumi Ornament, I used a G hook. And so this one, it's by the same person who did the first ones I showed you. Um, you just carry the yarn back and forth. Um, you do basically just do two stitches of white, two stitches of red, all the way around. At first I had a stitch marker in to like keep track of my rows, but you just go to a certain 
um, measurement inches so you don't really need to know how many rows you're doing so I took the stitch marker out and just kept spiraling around until it got to that I think it's like seven inches or something like that and then it calls for a wire inside with the stuffing um, I just used a pipe cleaner it was kind of hard to get in there once the stuffing was in so I ended up taking the stuffing out and putting the pipe cleaner in and then kind of stuffing around the pipe cleaner so it's a little bit big and fat um, I think this would be fun to make with like um, like a burnet, something like big and fluffy and like have as a other decoration, not a tree decoration. Um, <clears throat> and I haven't been putting strings on any of these because I was a little bit lazy. So, um, but this one was kind of fun to make just, I mean, it is a little tedious to go back and forth um, switching colors because basically you do one stitch that's all one color and the next stitch you switch halfway through when you change colors but once you get the rhythm down it's pretty simple um just if i made it bigger it would be hard to get wire thick enough i think to get it to hold its shape that's my only concern about that um <clears throat> this next one was i first found it on youtube but then i did go to her linked um, written pattern um it was just easier to read a written pattern than trying to watch a youtube video while we were driving, especially with, um, we didn't always have service. So this one is a, um, it's how to crochet candy cane holder. And, um, so just imagine that there's a candy cane in that, and then you would like hang that on your tree or give it as a gift or whatever. Um, I did do, that was, that was the back, sorry. Um, I did do this ruffly part wrong. Um, for some reason when I read it, I just read double crochet, chain one, double crochet, like if you stitch, well, I guess you're also supposed to do another chain one and another double crochet in each stitch. So there's supposed to be three double crochets and I only did two. And I had already fastened off when I noticed that. So I was just going to leave it and let you know that if you make your own the right way, it'll be more roughly than what this one is. Um... This next one was also on YouTube. It was just how to crochet a candy. And um, for most of these, I used an F hook. Pretty sure all the rest of them are an F hook. So this one is basically a peppermint candy. And um, this next one, tutorial crochet Christmas mini candy by different people. This one. They are both basically made the same way. So I did this one first and then this one. But you're basically, you're making a rectangle, but you're increasing on one end and decreasing on the other end. So it goes like this. Um, and then, so this one, and you're doing back loop only also, single crochets. Um, so this one, you just do a few rows and then you sew it together in this little spiral. Um, and then you make these and add those to sides. It didn't really explain how to add them so I just sewed them on however I thought. Um, this one you make a really big like longer <laughs> one and then you um, kind of sew it together. So but like this one was really easy because I'd already done this one so I knew what I was doing. Um, and then the last candy cane it's also on YouTube. Um, I didn't really pay attention that this pattern was not made to be a um, ornament. It's like just a decoration, um, which is fine. But a few things, it was, I, I wanted to do it because it was made kind of uniquely. So you do, you make two separate like strips. You do one that's like white and then red, and then you do another strip that's red and then white. And then you whip stitch those two together. And then after that, you um, whip stitch the other ends to together to make a tube, but you offset it enough so that it makes a spiral as it goes around. So I'll show you, see if it makes sense. So it looks like a piece of bacon before you start spiraling it. And then you're sewing these red, red to red stripes together and it spirals um hers was interesting because you don't use any real stuffing she just has you use um 
a bunch of pipe cleaners and she uses like six she says to use six to eight depending on how fluffy yours are um so mine i don't know if mine was too big or what but my pipe cleaners only got to about here and yeah so i had to um add more pipe cleaners a little a smaller section to get the rest and it's just one big long tube and then you shape it um and then the putting the ends together was a little bit weird so that's why i did this at the top because i felt like i did it better but that's also where the break is in the pipe cleaner inside so it was a little weird but i think this would be fun to put like if I did it again, I don't know, it was a little tedious to do all the stripes and the sewing together. Um, but if I made one again, I'd probably make it shorter to fit the pipe cleaners that I have. Though it's hard to know how many stitches to do because when you spiral it, it's probably a little bit shorter than just the straight um, rows, maybe. Um, and then um, either that or find longer pipe cleaners I don't know they might exist who knows <laughs> but yeah so it'd be cute to have like a bunch of these like in, sticking out of a vase or something um but I don't know if I would go through all that again <laughs> all right so on to gingerbread things um I only brought one color of brown um, I wish I had like a little bit better of a gingerbread -y color. I feel like gingerbread's a little more like orange tinted, like cinnamon. Um, and this is just a brown I had. It's Red Heart Super Saver. I just don't remember what color. Um, so this first one is called Crochet Gingerbread Hearts Ornaments. And I used an H hook, which I think is what it called for. And they um, put a whole bunch of like embellishments on here. They use like pearl beads and buttons and stuff so I did not have time to finish that but there's basically you know the basic shape and it's just got little zigzaggy type icing on the edges um you could also embellish it with just your own yarn however you want it to look like um this next one was um I found it on the West Yorkshire Spinners website and it's called Ginger Biscuits Crochet Garland. Um, so this was a free PDF download just on their website. Um, it's, it calls for one of their specific yarns, which I had to look up and find out that it's a, I think it's a fingering weight, like sock weight yarn. And they have you hold two together. Well, all of these that I'm making, I'm using four weight yarn. And um, so I used an F hook to try to get it small and like similar to two of a fingering weight held together um this pattern was um sorry the free pdf has four different designs to it it has the house um, a star a tree and what they call a bobble which is basically just a circle but i just wanted to make the house so here is my little gingerbread house um i'm not sure there was part of this like the edging I think I don't know if I did it right but it looks okay um, and then it has a little diagram showing kind of how to put the icing how they did it um, this is like surface slip stitches and then this is just me sewing yarn on um, they did also have French knots along some of these points but I am really bad at French knots and I didn't want to figure out how to do that again <laughs> um, so this next one is another house. It is called Crochet Gingerbread House Ornament Applique. I never know how to say that word. Um, and it's by the same person who did, I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, did these two. Um, pretty sure. So they called for a sport weight yarn, which I didn't have. And so I used an F hook and it's still it's just slightly big, um, but that's okay. And so basically like this shape was pretty simple. You just like increase and then decrease. And um, I didn't have this brown on hand with me, so I had to wait to do that at home. And I 
just decided to, and for the sake of time, I decided to hot glue all these pieces on instead of sewing them on. Obviously I sew or I crocheted the edging on and yeah, that part I wasn't sure if I did quite right. Um, I might have missed a few stitches in there. I don't know, <laughs> but I think it looks okay. But it is rather big for an ornament, so um, I would suggest using a smaller yarn <laughs> if you were going to make it. Maybe like what the pattern says to use would be good. Um, this next one is called Crochet Iced Gingerbread Ornaments. And she has um, two designs, a snowflake design and a tree design. Um, so I just did the snowflake. So here is that. Um, I had a hard time, like the cookie part was easy, um, except for I think there was technically a typo, um, <laughs> but I always find typos when they do like the repeats, when they like in the brackets or whatever, and they say like go back and repeat this this many times. Um, she didn't include the skipping a stitch after your five double crochets in one stitch and um i wasn't sure about it so as i was i when i started making it i put like a stitch marker in each spot the way she wrote it and i was like four or five stitches short from getting all the way around and she says you're supposed to have six shells um so when i did it adding that skip stitch it worked out so in case you do that that's just how it is. Um, the surface crochet was difficult for me. Um, I didn't like hers. I did it kind of like hers, but um, it looked like she like went all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. Um, I didn't like how unsymmetrical that looked, having stitches going one way and not all the same way. So what I did is I, I went from the center out all these different six times and then these little spiky parts I just um, I didn't surface crochet it's just like the yarn embroidered I guess you could say and then hers she also does a um, around one of these circles she does some surface crochet but I just left it because I have been working on it long enough so I was done with it um, but she shows a few different ways if like you just want to embroider and not surface crochet she shows um, I mean, she doesn't really explain how to do it. She just has the pictures of how she did it. And then the tree just has like little zigzag frosting on it. So, um, but I was, I did trees last time, so I didn't want to do the tree. Um, then the last one is a crochet gingerbread man. This was by Repeat Crafter Me. And I used an H hook and he's a little wonky. So I don't make fun of him. So here he is. Um, I didn't have safety eyes with me, so I had to finish him at home um, this morning. But so basically, you make two of this shape, and then um, you add eyes and mouth and the buttons on one half, and then you surface crochet slip stitch basically all around. Um, it was. A little weird making him because his I don't want to say weird but his all his legs and arms are made with um, triple crochets so you chain out and then triple crochet all the way back and then you like slip stitch and then um, that's all connected to the body but the head you have to sew on separate um, so it's kind of a pain to make I don't love doing triple crochets I feel like they're really um, loose so I mean like I can pull him apart and stick my finger through there and I don't really like that so I mean two together like this is better than obviously one by itself would be um, and then I feel like his head's kind of weird it like wants to pop out like that or sunk, sink in like that I'm trying to keep it straight it's kind of weird but um, she does have a pattern for like a mini gingerbread man that I might try because like I said this one's a little or Again, this one's a little bit big for an ornament. So I say that some people have really big Christmas trees and so maybe they want big ornaments to like have that visual interest. We don't have a huge big Christmas tree because we don't have a big 
ceiling. Um, so I like to keep my ornaments smallish so that we can, you know, fill it more <laughs> and not have so many big ones. I mean, it's, I feel like it's good to have some big ones, some small ones, but like these two, I think would be a little too big, but like, like this one's a little more feasible, I think. Um, yeah, so I think that's everything. Sorry if I kind of rushed through. I didn't want to make this video too long, but I did want to show you everything that I made. Um, I'm done with vacations, but we do have like soccer and swimming and stuff. So, <laughs> um, I don't remember. I think I decided next week's going to be like snowman, Santa's and reindeer. We'll see <laughs> how many I decide to do. I probably shouldn't do like more than 10 like I just did, but I had the yarn and we were driving for 16 hours both ways. So I had the time to at least start them. So I decided to just go for it because I had so many I wanted to try. Um, so yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that and I hope to see you guys again next week and I will talk to you guys later. Bye guys.